Here's those uh, congratulations. Uh, to, first of all, I mean, really special movie. Uh, um, it, it seems hard to believe that it's your first film. I mean, the first thing I was thinking, it's, it's so mature, you know. It seems like a very seasoned filmmaker did it. I mean, it's so confident, but no, not overconfident. It's just so confident in the pacing and the visual style. It's consistent, and it just doesn't seem like um, somebody who's, who's, who's trying this for the first time. Uh, uh, but I guess you, you've had, uh, you know, a lot of experience. You're a writer. I, I, I saw you've, uh, you know, you've been writing and, and, of course, assistant directing with Lantimos and, and many others. And, uh, you know, so, but anyway, uh, just a very impressive film. The, the performances and, the, you know, of course, the, the beautiful, creating this, you know, abstract surreal world in a way just uh you know and and still catching you know so much of the essence of the society the the, the reality level but in, in this more surreal uh way which is just a, a beautiful me metaphor for what's happening with you know isolation of characters and uh, lack of communication uh, as we are all experiencing it uh, with social media and then it's it's told in such a beautiful simplistic way that um yeah, I, I guess uh, I should ask you, uh, uh, you know, the inspiration for this particular story came from where, I guess, maybe, where, where was, how, how did it initially, initially develop, uh, you know, this idea, and, and how long did it take you to sort of work, you know, this fi final format that, that you put on screen? Um, first of all, thank you very much for your kind words. <laughs> I really appreciate it, especially when it comes from you. Mm -hmm. And um, um, this idea came to me, uh, in general, I always love to watch movies that create worlds. Um, worlds that are a little bit uh, surreal, a little bit different from the ones that we live right now, and change the rules of our society, and see our society in a little bit different angle. Um, and that's what we did also in Apples. Uh, I mean that, uh, and it's also a very personal story as I started writing it when I was trying to deal with the loss of my father, but I couldn't. And I was trying to understand why people forget so easily and how selective is our memory and how we can erase something that hurt us. And could it be that we are the things we don't forget because in a way we are our memories. So all these questions were in my mind and I tried to transfer, to transfer my my personal experience and thoughts uh, in an ecumenical story and uh, create this uh, world that uh, amnesia spreads like a virus virus, and uh, people forget so easily. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting because, of course, uh, you know, now we're dealing with COVID and stuff, and I, I was, I was, you know, imagining watching the film, what, what if this was a virus we'd be dealing with right now, you know, which in a way, I mean, amnesia and, and Alzheimer is increasing and it's sort of becoming issues, but, you know, I don't want to get into all that. But uh, but I, I read in some interview, because I always say it, it's like what's happening with our memory and with, uh, you know, the use of devices and iPhones and, you know, my kids are basically, you know, spending so much time watching. I mean, we always talk about watching movies. Should we go to the movie theater? Of course, now we can't, but, you know, they... They, they view everything more or less on an iPad and it's, it's really concerning me. And, and you know, I, 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 I saw that you said the same thing. I always say, you know, when I, was, when I was 18, I probably remembered 50 phone numbers in my head. And now I can, you know, I know my wife's and, and, <laughs> and yours. <laughs> and mine is sometimes like if I'm in Greece a long time, I, I forget my uh, American number. Uh, which is, uh, but I remember still my girlfriend's number from Munich from 1978. <laughs> I, I remember, which is, you know, yeah. it's like you say, the selective memory, it's, it's really interesting, you know, because also, uh, you know, we work on, sometimes we work on movies and, and, and you know, you have hardship and you have some people you don't like and, and some terrible days and, you know, then some good days. And as soon as you wrap a movie and a week later and you're having drinks with a crew or at the wrap party, like all the bad things are forgotten. It's just amazing what the human mind does. I mean, I don't think I remember any of the really bad, unless it's, you know, super traumatic and stuff. And I, you know, I, I lost my father in 2008 and 
actually went into production right on the movie right after in Greece and um you know, uh, of course, but but uh, I, I found it fascinating with your lead character, and uh, of course, you know, it's it's also interesting how it's slowly revealed that he is not actually. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Well, I guess they saw the movie. Uh, we can spoil because everybody that uh, is got yeah, yeah. uh, you know, to me, it was very fascinating to slowly discover that it's a choice, and it reminded me very much of this uh, Swiss writer uh, Max Frisch, who was my favorite writer. He wrote *Homo Faber* and *My Name Is Heiko and uh, it's actually exactly. it's something I read very young as an eighteen-year-old, and and *My Name Is Heiko is about a guy who just decides to. Uh, Pretend he's blind, or or I, I can't actually I can't remember, but, but I think blind, and it's very tricky for him not to give it away, you know, throughout the novel. Like he he sometimes is like, and it's a little bit your character in the movie. I mean, you know, when he sings the lyrics in the car, and you know, why would does you know he doesn't recognize the the, the Christmas song and and associated with Santa Claus, and and then. Um, and then he remembers the lyrics and, and you know so it's it's interesting because he his performance is also very good i mean i do want to point out and not just love i mean i don't want to get too technical but the minimalistic camera work and and you know but not it's never taking me out of it with a uh, style i mean it's you know i'm conscious of the headroom so you know a little bit in the pl polish flair of the, the aspect ratio and the little you know, space that's a, a oppressive, you know, sort of like Ida and, uh, you know, that, that's, uh, but, um, and I saw you had a Polish uh, cinematographer as well, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and he's also, it's his first film. That's uh, also really incredible. It's his debut. Uh, but we worked a lot because I'm also pushing a lot on the framing. I mean, that yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, course, I love to do course. the framing sometimes. Yeah. And uh, yes, we had this in our mind, but we, we selected to work in four by three. Uh, yes, of, of course, I love Vida and I love uh, the movies of Pavlikovsky. I mean, these two movies that he did yeah. with Um But uh, Mostly we selected it because it's uh, it's an aspect ratio that it it can be connected somehow with the Polaroid photo, as Polaroid has the square ratio, and uh, we also wanted uh, to to approach the movie in a more anthropocentric way. Uh, and uh, the four by three is used most of the times in uh, movies, for example, of Adre Arnold, uh, in movies that are, are having a little bit more social topic. Uh, but uh, it was never used in a movie that is a little bit more high concept dystopian one. Right. Uh, uh, we were thinking that it's very nice to make a movie that we follow only one person and we're going close to him and we don't care so much about the landscape, about the world, but more about the human. And so the whole story through a human. Right. Uh, and that's the way that we try to approach the whole story. I mean, to go closer to him and to make the audience uh, feel his emotions somehow. Right. Feel his story, his and emotions. also how he's placing himself in this limited box. So, yes, um, exactly. Because he, he looks a little bit uh, somehow uh, entrapped there, isolated in, in this frame. Yeah. Yeah, that's very, very effective. And, uh, and it almost, you know, it almost makes you long to see a little bit more, but it, it definitely allows you to focus in on, on you know, his looks and uh, how he takes time uh, looking at things. And, and you see the process in his head and uh, uh, the way he observes even the people that are talking to him. You, you stay on this close up a lot. It, it's, it's very informative, sort of, you know, his thought process becomes, you know, very. Uh, it reads in a nice way. I shouldn't say transparent because it's not transparent, but it's nice how you can observe him and interpret what he's thinking. You know, I mean, you're you're, you're searching like he is, you know, for answers. And and then later, when I realize he's 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 repressing yeah. himself, even then, you know, I, I wanted to see if there's a change in that performance, but he does it really well. You know, he just sort of meant. He looks at her, you know, when she's uh, asking, you know, at the, at the door when she comes over, and uh, anyway, he just takes her in, and I, I don't really see a change, you know. He sees, uh, you know, and then he makes that decision for himself to go back to his place, you know. So, yeah, uh, it's it's really 
not telegraphed it's very very subtle and just uh yeah really fascinating to watch exactly in general that, that was the tricky thing about the story because um we know <laughs> as a writer i mean i know that uh, uh he pretends in the whole movie but we yeah. have to give uh, hints to the audience in a very subtle way uh, that uh, they will not understand it very early but also it will not be like a fake twist at the end so it has to build gradually in the whole story uh, a little bit in the back of their mind that something is going wrong here with him something is going wrong something is going wrong in order to because there are a lot of elements in the film a lot of moments that you can feel that uh, he pretends uh, even in the scene that uh, you said about uh, uh, that he listens for example uh, the music song of uh, swan's lake and he selects the mexican uh, it's because he's trying to to convince the doctors that he's totally amnesiac. Yeah, I mean that uh, one, and the way he smiles when he holds it up, yes. like he's, he's happy he picked the right. I mean, those are great moments. And I was thinking, I mean, I didn't really suspect it at that point, but I was thinking, I don't know, you know. And and um, you know, then I mean, I think my first hint was when she's doing the handstand and he goes you know maybe i was an athlete and he goes uh, like steve Thor, and she goes she goes what's that he goes never mind yes or, or maybe a, a little bit earlier with the dog no oh of course uh, yes of course of course this one is a little bit earlier because uh, yeah, with uh, the that, dog you that had more hand. obvious that one's more obvious so i kind of uh i didn't want to i don't know i didn't want to process that yet i didn't want to go there as an audience you know, as a viewer, because I didn't want to let, but yeah, of course, that, that one, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that then there are moments like that, for example, that he remembers the lyrics, he knows how to dance, uh, comparing to the other. I mean, that uh, there are a lot of things that he knows how to cook. Um, but as I said, we, we did everything in a very subtle way in order to build, uh, to, to make the story, I don't know, more interesting for the audience that they can. Well, also you're you're Probably. also throwing you're also throwing some red herrings now because when the the uh, on Manavis Bule, when he says uh, uh, the, you know the, the apples uh, help the memory, then he switches to oranges and you know yes. so that actually you know I mean if he knows he's faking it, he wouldn't be concerned exactly. about it. Um, but exactly. so that, that he accepts his past and that's why he eats the, uh, the apple, which uh, somehow symbolizes his past and uh, his life. And we selected apples because uh, apples can improve your memory. Uh, and also, my father used to eat a lot of apples. He was eating around seven to eight apples per day. And he had an amazing memory. And, uh, and uh, the third reason is, as you said before, that uh, we have uh, everybody, somehow we have store our data in devices right now. Uh, and uh, most of the time, these devices are coming from the company Apple. So it's an irony about how we can put our memories in Apple's. Yeah. Uh, but it's true that uh, I, I don't know why we don't remember. I mean, that I also remember in the past around maybe more than 50 uh, phone numbers. And right now, I don't know. I remember. Yeah. Like no, it, it's terrible. And actually, I mean, I'm also older, but I'm I'm definitely experiencing uh, memory loss. So after the movie, I said to my wife, "Can we? Because we never have apples at home." Um, I said, "Can we buy some apples?" Because I read uh, <laughs> they improve the memory, and she goes, "No, they have a lot of sugar. So and you have maybe higher sugar. So and that was shut down. Come but on, uh, they don't have so much sugar. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna start eating uh, apples, but it, it's it's terrible what's happening with uh, you know with them. I mean, a lot of my friends. I mean, I'm, I'm it's not just me. Uh, I mean, um, uh, it's it's definitely all this technology and how uh, we use it and how uh, we work for it that it's it's making it very difficult. Uh, to I mean I have to I have to write everything down and uh, you know the simplest things the simplest shopping list if I don't I'll literally forget to buy toilet paper I mean it's um, so it's we're becoming so dependent on it and you know and also I'm worried about you know because people always ask me you know what was your inspiration for, for this film or how this or the culture I go it's 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 not one particular thing it's an accumulation of everything I've experienced in my life that's my inspiration you know and and then I see 
the performance or I'm given, you know, uh, a story and the images I create when I read it are, are based on everything I've experienced since I'm a, a child, really, you know, like, you know, the earliest walk through the, the Vasily Koki for in Athens or, you know, and the, uh, the, the, the early smell of the Kuluri and then, then, you know, growing up in Greece. And then, uh, you know, everything is, is just like you said, our life is literally just our memory. I mean, it's nothing else. I mean, and other people's memories of us and their interpretation of who we are, but for ourselves, who I am and who you are is only what we, what our brain generates in terms of who we are and what that is only based on our memory of the events we lived and the education and what we read and the first, you know, novel that affected us, the first movie that, you know, may, I mean, that guided us to choose this career and uh, the first love and uh, the first kiss and the first dance and the first everything so um you know it's 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 frightening if if that's something that you know deteriorates and can be lost so easily of course you know it's a it's a horrible disease and it's uh, you know a, a, a concern because i'm also thinking kids who grow up only with this technology and are really creating different kinds of memories that a lot of them are are you know not physical and reality based and more virtual i suppose and you know they create yes. you know they, 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 they don't flirt anymore in person it's horrible yes they flirt behind the screen i mean that it's yeah they're just they and back and forth and it's it's a whole nother art form i mean they're very good at it probably but i was i was in oslo uh sitting in a park and you know it's a it's a high you know it's a first world country with high education rate and stuff. And there were six teenagers and sitting in a park and I was having a cigarette. I had to wait for somebody. I observed them for 30 minutes. Very attractive girls, three very attractive girls, let's say 15 to 16 and three, they're sitting uh, on the bench together. Every single one of them was on the device and uh, not once did they verbally interact. Uh, and I was thinking they might, it might even be more absurd that they're actually texting to each other or exchanging minds or something to each other while they sit next to each other and literally communicating on the device to each other while they're uh, one meter apart. I mean, so it was, uh, you know, it's, I don't know. It's, but, uh, so, it's somehow we also, we also live that right now through pandemic. I mean, that the, because we live in this dystopia that uh, imagine that me and you we never meet uh, we will do this in person and not uh, like that we are doing it right now yeah. uh, through a screen and uh, I hope that this will stop soon I mean that I hope that after uh, the vaccine will start working that uh, we will stop working like this I yeah. mean that uh, we are working all day through Zoom it seems yeah I mean I think the Greeks have an advantage because the Greek society and I, I was there during the pandemic and I did a movie during the pandemic and and now I and after that I worked in Slovenia and in Morocco and in America during the pandemic. The Greek society I think is more resilient because they so they are so such social animals and uh, their culture and their I mean it's so it's impossible for them not to be social animals uh you know uh in a good way i mean i'm saying you know it's so important for you know the family interaction and and the social interaction it's it's i think the greeks won't have a hard time adjusting to going back to the way it was you know once we are permitted to and are given freedom again uh um i'm not so concerned but i i am concerned about other cultures and i'm concerned uh, for the young generation, because my kids are 13, they're doing Zoom school now since March. And uh, it's probably going to continue till, 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 till the summer again. Uh, and, you know, my daughter is a bit introverted and, and she actually is fine. And they both are doing very good. They're twins, so it helps, but they're both doing very well. Uh, but, you know, the fact that she has no social interaction with other friends uh, other than uh, on the uh, uh, their device, it's 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 feeding into her uh, 
uh, her agoraphobia in a way and her shyness and it's 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 it's, a, it's coming at a really for me personally it's coming at a really bad time i think where the development is 12 13 14 15 going and becoming a teenager now in in january um you know i'm really worried about that this is uh, even you know feeding more into this behavior and uh i mean my son is you know more social but it is some some characters some people are gonna have a very hard time uh, uh, reverting back out of this and as i'm very concerned for the kids and i'm also concerned for you know it's a less severe subject but you know the future uh, they ask me all the time about cinema and you know my experience is going to movies and seeing it i mean at least in greece we have the outdoor theaters of i mean you know but uh i don't know if people are gonna be becoming so accustomed to watching things you know everyone's upgrading you're getting a better tv better sounds this and even i who never watched netflix and never i mean this year i've watched you know the queen's game I mean, all these things i would never watch really just because you know i i'm, I'm at home and i'm watching it and um yeah, and i'm that's just true. you know that's, true. But I, I don't want this. This. that's the problem yeah, uh, getting used to it and and you know for me when i went and saw barry linden when i was you know 13 and and the intermission and you know watching these movies ben hur and stuff in the theater i mean it was such a huge event that really formed my my future and my life you know and and my kids will never experience this probably i mean it's like they don't even it's not not no excitement to go to the movies or you know i mean i i'm, I'm using cinema now is an example but it's 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 you know i mean uh the excitement to go experience i mean luckily they still like to go skiing and it's and enjoy nature in that way because skiing is exciting but it's it's becoming lesser and lesser things that actually uh, motivate them to leave that world of you know virtual uh, reality so yes because uh, in a way something that we were also trying to comment with the film about social media is that how social media has changed our lives that we care more about the photo than to live an experience. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's a beautiful uh, analogy you have with the Polaroids. And uh, I read that it's, I didn't think of it during the film, but, you know, people just, it's, it's all about the reality that they create on Instagram and the way they want the people to interpret what they're, how happy they are, how in love they are, uh, what their activities are. And they waste all the actual experience by being busy capturing this fake reality of what they're experiencing. And that is like the saddest. I mean, I, I do it also. So, and I catch myself, you know, oh, this is great, you know. I mean, I'm like, okay, I want my mom to see it and stuff. But I mean, I take many more images than I used to because it's just in my phone and available. And then, you know, I, I used to uh, never show my photos to anyone. And now I'm constantly exposing uh, my family and all these things to really, does it really, to whom, you know? who? I mean, other than my mother, she's still alive and I know she's, it's important. So <laughs> I have excuse, but uh it's 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 pathetic i go to people's internet accounts and it's just like the, the series of of selfies in every every absurd possible situation which you're showing in your movie you know <laughs> it's it's like it's crazy i mean these people have literally no life left. yes and and there is no privacy somehow or not in all this because uh through social media we don't have something uh private i mean that we are just uploading stuff and everybody can see it. Everybody yeah. can watch it and everybody can comment also. But it's also um, real because the situations that they capture are not real because you wouldn't be taking a selfie if you were really in love and having sex with a woman. You wouldn't be concerned about capturing that woman and showing to anybody that you are with a woman or man or whatever. Um, you know, so that also means like if someone's, yeah, anyway. I mean, you know all that, and you're you're portraying it very well in this movie. But it's funny when she goes take somebody to the bathroom and have sex with them, and then photograph that. And I mean, you know, get the lap dance and for, uh, document that. And I mean, you know, it's it's, it's, it's a perfect. Um, it's such a beautiful movie about it. And and the fact, uh, you know, I want to just add one more thing. The the what I really love about it, it, it does this really beautiful 
portray of these very serious things and in a way it's you know some people might think oh it's a sad or depressing story but it has such great humor and i always feel like you know the uh, the most effective way to tell these stories i mean same with nebraska and that's why with alexander Payne, we you know we love these things i mean nebraska is about isolation a lack of communication loneliness uh you know we do it with a different aspect ratio i mean it's the person lost in these barren empty landscapes and you know the close-up is centers him but you know we don't isolate him from his surrounding which has nothing it's void of you know it's farm country and you know so it's a different uh visual but similar to looking for the same effect you know sort of isolating a character but uh, uh, i keep it but in a, in a comedic way because you are laughing all the time with bruce dern but yeah. in a good way and because you're not laughing with him in a bad way. I mean, you're laughing at the same time, you're feeling a lot of empathy for him. Empathy, yeah, and I feel, yeah. And then with your film, I, I was laughing a lot too and smiling a lot. And, and you know, it's it's just, if I'm being pounded over the head with a, uh, uh, you know, a message and, and, you know, the way, you know, American films sometimes deal with this subject. I mean, it's it's not it's not as effective and not as interesting. And I think that's why you know, um, you know, the the European filmmakers are, are just um, the much more interesting to to, to watch and, and often you know than the more for, formulaic approaches of dealing with the subject. You know, so. Yes, for for me, it's very it's very easy the answer for that. I mean that. Because uh, as our life is mixed by tragic and comedic moments, I think that's how we have to portray also things that are tragic in movies. I mean that uh, if we will uh, uh, try to, to show them through also a bit comedic uh, moments, uh, uh, because in Apples we try to have also comedic, mysterious moments, uh, moments that are a little bit more emotional, dramatic. Um, uh, like our life how is our life i mean and how our life is mixed by different moments and uh, by different emotions yeah um and that's i think that it's more the more effective way uh, for sure for sure i i totally agree i mean uh life without humor i mean you know i, I mean benini did a a comedy in the concentration camp you know and it's like uh, people love it and uh you know it's just it's uh yeah, I mean, I'll, uh, I'll tell a quick story. You know, we were nominated for for Nebraska, and then the movie that won that year—it's a very heavy movie, uh, one best picture. And Alexander turns to me, and goes, "Not a lot of laughs in that one." <laughs> so, um, anyway, but um, well, just those congratulations and uh, thank you so much. Um, I think thank we're—I think we've done twenty minutes or maybe more, which is great. I wish we could I, uh, talk longer, and uh, I, I wish you continued success with this. Uh, I hope it finds uh, an audience here in the states. Um, I'm recommending it to as many people as I can, and, and not because I want to help the Greek filmmakers, but because I really want my friends to see it. And uh, and uh, um, you know, um, on to many, many more. It's unbelievable that this is your first movie, I and. Mean, uh, so uh, keep making more and uh, I hope I, 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 I can talk to you in person not on the, the screen uh, in, Af in, person. in <laughs> Athens uh, we'll have a, a beer in the Dexamini and uh, chat some more great, <laughs> thank you very much happy new year